aquí, nosotros somos patriotas. Estamos por la libertad de Cuba. Esto no se trata de derecha, no se trata de izquierda, de una posición política, se trata de libertad. So when July 11th happened, the song that went with those protests was Patria Vida, and you could hear the people in the streets singing the song as they were marching and protesting. In the 80s, when they opened up and allowed for Cubans to leave, it was my parents' opportunity to say, this is our chance, it's either now or never. You cannot be the leader of the free world to believe what happened on July 11th, 12th, and 13th is about COVID. It's about freedom. There was a political operation, um, mostly from some technological platforms based in, in, in Florida and weaponizing internet and using digital networks for um, misinforming public opinion. Miami is a city that is so central to the discussion about what's going on in the longest running totalitarian system in this hemisphere. And of course, I'm speaking about uh, the family dictatorship of the Castros in Cuba. And recently, if you were to read the news and the way it was covered, whether it was Bloomberg or the New York Times or the Washington Post, they covered it as Cubans are rising up against the pandemic response of the Cuban government. There's an ongoing discussion about the pandemic response, the, the things the Cuban government did or did not do during the pandemic. But nobody who was marching in Cuba was yelling down with coronavirus. They were... They were chanting libertad. And if you read the signs, they, they, they say, down with the dictatorship. What was the game changer? In 94, we had huge protests of thousands of people in Havana, but it was just Havana. This time, it was south of Havana, San Antonio Los Baños. But what happened was people saw it live streaming across the island. So then people got inspired in over 50 towns and villages and took to the streets themselves. That's John Suarez, executive director of the Center for a Free Cuba. I met up with him on Miami Beach at the Oslo Freedom Forum. The annual global conference brings together human rights activists, journalists, artists, and world leaders to share their stories and ideas about expanding freedoms around the world. In a city with large Cuban, Haitian, and Venezuelan communities, conversations about freedom and repression are common. Right now, Venezuela, which was a wealthy country, Correct. is poorer than Haiti I know. by a no factor time. of two or three. Yeah, in no time. And Cuba is a similar basket case. They've destroyed the island, they've destroyed the ecology. They cover it up with their propaganda. But to say Lincoln Road Mall, Gosh, I'd love to see the La Rambla de La Habana looking like right. Lincoln Road Mall. Right. Well, <laughs> and I'm sure the Cubans on the island would too. And also they'd love to see the supermarkets that we have here over there. Since the 1960s, South Florida has been a haven for Cuban refugees fleeing the island. Most come in search of freedom, opportunity, and a better life. Two communities separated by the sea but John says it's still one Cuban people, despite attempts by the Cuban government to drive a wedge between them. The regime is trying to stoke fear and division between the two communities. The reality is Miami has been constantly receiving Cuban refugees since 1959 until today. So we're hearing the stories from the people that left Havana a week ago to say that we're somehow disconnected and aren't hearing the conversations of what the reality is today. Is a false narrative. Los cubanos han sabido durante muchísimo tiempo que el gobierno siempre los mira y que la expresión en redes sociales y que la expresión en cualquier espacio público en Cuba que sea disidente, que sea contra el gobierno, puede tener repercusiones. I think the bottom line is the people in there, like the people here, want to see a free Cuba. They want to see a Cuba where they can be the authors of their own destiny, where young people don't have to flee Cuba to be able to have a future, which is the situation now. 
Cuba's history is still being written, and it's yet to be seen if these recent protests will ultimately lead to broader changes on the island. But for the children of Cuban parents who fled the country, their family history is forever linked to Cuba's future. Well, I'm Daniel Figueredo, and I'm uh, the owner of Sandwich de Miami. And I'm Rosa Romero, and I'm co-owner, and uh, this is our home away from home. We're Cuban, and we're from Miami, and it's what we know, um, and our culture is so beautiful, and I think that we should embrace that, and how awesome would it be to have a proper representation of that. Yes, like uh, an incredible Cuban sandwich shop, just specialize in sandwiches and batidos and do it to the best of our ability. He left his, uh, his career and we started selling pan con lechon at local festivals. And within less, within eight months, I left um, my career. We had two little girls under the age of one because they're 11 months apart. We completely just put it all in, you know, we knew that. Why? Well, you, well I think to, to answer that, you really have to understand where we come from, right? The 26 de Julio, the 26th of July movement, led by Fidel Castro, had turned out the tyrant Batista. To the Cuban people and to the admiring world, there could be no better way to start the new year. My family left in 1962. By that time, communism had already run, was, was fully developed. When Fidel Castro came into power, the educational system changed, the medical system changed. Everything was owned by the government. If you had a hotel, it be, now became property of the government. And it's very difficult to fathom. Even for me, I lived the storyline. I lived, I lived the pain that my grandfather carried with him when he left Cuba that heartbreak of saying I left my Cuba and I left my Cuba in the hands of a man who doesn't, who stole it from me. The government decided three main cities where you would be, where you'd be going. Either you're gonna be going to New Jersey, you'll be going to Chicago, or you're going, staying here in Miami. My family went to Chicago. So I was born in Chicago, I was born in Skokie. My parents came in in Mariel in 1980, and I was born two years later. And so, growing up with parents who had migrated here, it's something that I understand. I get goosebumps because I understand it much more today as an adult and as a business owner. Um, I remember growing up, and even into high school, kind of being hard on my parents of thinking, you know, how come you weren't as involved in school? Why didn't you go to the open houses? Why, you know, why didn't you have that team spirit? And I didn't, it isn't until today in adulthood that I have my own business that I employ immigrants that come here and I single-handedly see the, the struggles that they go through in the beginning years of coming to this country that I realized they did the best they could with what they had. And I get emotional because I wish I would have learned that sooner, you know? These Cuban immigration stories are at the heart of the Cuban American experience. They provide a peek through the window of living outside the bubble, the American bubble, a place where immigrants sometimes risk everything to get inside. I spoke with Danny, Rosa, and John to get a sense of what the effects were on their parents' country with so many generations having to leave with little hope of going back to build on what they've accomplished in America. So I think if, if we're smart enough and we understand the consequences of this development phase that Cuba will one day provide, that we do right by it, that we go in there, we preserve, we teach, and we don't take that opportunity for ourselves, but give that opportunity to those that live on the island. The diaspora will play a role in amplifying the messages of the Democrats in Cuba, of the human rights defenders, of the people who've been, you know, tortured, jailed, because the people that are in the prisons today will be the people 
in a democratic transition. They'll be running Cuba tomorrow.